Hi everyone and welcome back to another Mixed Media Tuesday. Today I'm going for a double page spread and I will be working on my new Small Dilutions Art Journal. The inspiration for today's layout comes from the Vagabond in Japan collection by Stamperia. This is designed by Antonis Tsenidakis. I have already used images from this collection before in a couple of pages. So for example this board I have already used as well as the lady. So another great focal point for a page is this pagoda and that's what I'm going for today. I did fuzzy cut the pagoda and you can see it gives a lovely big focal point that would fill up one of the pages nicely. Now for my background I'm going to do one of my favorite techniques which is mosaic. So I'm going to find a pattern paper that is not very competitive with the colors of my focal point and I'm just going to cut out little pieces without measuring anything. I'm just creating tiles here. These papers come from the background's paper pad that is from the same collection but in any case for this technique you can use any pattern paper that you have at home or even just plain white paper. What we are going for is tiles overlapping each other which are going to give a lovely texture on the background and at the same time we get the bonus of the lovely design of the pattern paper. I am using matte medium to stick all the tiles down and I make sure that I will cover up completely both pages. I don't lay the tiles one next to the other, I rather overlap them to get that texture that I want for the finished project. Stamperia has amazing collections and their paper pads are always awesome. If you don't know what to create uh, and if you are a beginner, it is a great idea to just grab one of their paper pads in a collection that is attractive to you. You will find lots of big focal points to cut out that would make a page come together really easy. All you have to do then is to just play with your mediums to create a background. So now I finished covering up both my pages, I'm going over with the last layer of matte medium and now I will make sure that everything is completely dry. I will also use my scissors to cut off any excess paper so that I will end up with nice and neat pages. Now although I like the background as it is, I want to tone it down a little bit. That's why I'm going to grab my gesso and I happen to have this jar by Finaber by Prima which is very thick that's why I will apply a little bit on my glass mat and thin it down with water. This way it's not going to go super white on top of my page it's going to look a little bit more transparent since I don't want to cover up the beautiful design that I already have. I'm applying gesso with my brayer and uh, you can see how this page now looks more toned down. If you want, you can uh, apply the first layer, dry it and then go back and add the second layer to tone it down even more. I'm happy with how it looks, so I will repeat the same process on the other page and I'll just wait until this is dry. Now let's apply some color on the background, for that I am going with uh, oxide sprays and that's why I'm going to use my spray box just to make sure that I'm not going to create a mess all over my uh, surface. Now I am going with a pink one and a grey one. This is Kitsch Flamingo and Hickory Smoke. It's a great combination for the focal point that I have. It's, it doesn't compete with the colors of my pagoda. And at the same time it's going to add a touch of pink since I'm planning to use some pink flowers from the same collection. Now on my background I do have matte medium as well as gesso and that doesn't allow the spray to dry super quickly however I'm helping that process with my heat gun. And now let's do some stenciling. I'm grabbing one of the stencils from the same collection and this is a stencil that I have been using again and again on all my Stamperia Vagabond in Japan projects. I am going over the text with my archival link in black. You can of course use um, paste in this case, I just wanted to have completely flat uh, text on my background as if it was stamped. And I'm going with archival ink just because I know that this is going to dry 
really quickly and at the same time it stays permanent. I'm going to do that text stenciling in three different areas of my pages and uh, then you probably know what is going to follow. I like to have a slightly darker border. That's why I'm going with that same uh, blending tool all around the edges. For today's page, I decided to go with uh, good old techniques that I used to love and use a lot. That's why I started with that tiled background and I'm also going to grab my big brush markers to add shadows later on. So for now I'm going to play with another stencil, this is the bamboo stencil again from the same collection and I'm going to apply a texture paste or modeling paste, whatever works here, in black. Also notice that my stencil isn't as uh, big as long as the page and it is going to leave a gap at the top. At this stage I was thinking that uh, this is not a problem, I'm just going to stick a paper and do some collage up at the top. However, this is not going to work for my composition at the end, I didn't like sticking anything there. So you will see that I'm going to grab that stencil one more time and just fill in the gap by shifting the stencil at the top. You will see what I mean in a bit. After lifting the stencil, I fell in love with that uh, image. I think it is a lovely stencil and I think I'm going to use it more and more. Now, I'm going to repeat the same idea on the other side where I am planning to stick the pagoda, just having some of those bamboo leaves coming out from behind. Notice that the paste that I'm working with is very thick, that means that it stays exactly where I want it to go, it keeps its shape and I apply a little bit every time with a very fine tip palette knife, giving me the perfect impression. Now of course you know I love splashes, that's why I'm using the Kitsch Flamingo spray and while this background is drying out, let's work on the focal points. So from the Vagabond in Japan paper pad I did cut out the pagoda as well as a fan and a few of those pink flowers. I'm going all around the edges with a black marker. Little details like this really bring your page to life. You will find that when you fuzzy cut images you don't do the perfect job. However, if you go all around it with a black marker it's going to cover up any imperfections and your cutout elements are going to look perfect. After playing a little bit with the position of all the elements, I am committing and sticking everything down. I do embellish the pagoda with a few of those big flowers, so I am creating kind of a cluster at the top of that one. I'm going to stick everything using my glue, this is the Art by Marlin glue, but anything would work here. You can even work with uh, matte medium if you like, I'm just avoiding touching too much the background because I do have oxide uh, sprays there and they are not permanent. If I touch it with something without being very careful, it might uh, smudge and smear. In terms of composition, I always like to have my big focal point on the side of the page instead of sticking it at the center. I find that this is more pleasing to the eye. I always like to have some of the element coming out of the page and I use my scissors to cut off any excess paper. And on the other side, I'm just creating a little cluster at the bottom of the page using the fan and a few of the flowers. The Art by Marlene glue, although holds the paper lovely, it doesn't grab instantly, so it gives you a few seconds to move things around until you are happy with the placement. And now this is where I didn't stick anything at the top of that uh, bamboo tree, that's why I need to somehow um, extend the branches. I'm going to bring in my stencil again, just use one of all those bamboo branches, and extend the design. It doesn't have to be perfect, this is not a continuous design, however it worked just fine. And now this is where I realized that all my cutout elements weren't bright enough and that's where my big brush markers come to play. For that technique to work I need to turn all the elements that I am planning to use my big brush markers into, into non-porous surfaces, that's why I'm covering them up, only those elements, the cut out ones, with matte medium. 
Then I'm going to make sure that the matte medium is completely dry before I touch them with my big brush markers. Drying the matte medium is super important. If you touch the matte medium with your big brush markers, you are going to ruin them since matte medium is actually glue. And now I'm going to bring in my big brush marker. For the roof, I'm using a slightly darker blue, as you can see, which I blend out with my fingers. I always do the blending quite quickly, otherwise that brush stroke is going to dry permanent and I won't be able to blend it out. Again, remember, for you to be able to smudge that brush stroke and get that softer look, you need to have a non-porous surface. It's not going to work directly on paper. So I'm going to use different colors of markers, every time slightly darker than the color underneath to add some shading. This is going to bring all the elements to life, it makes them look more dimensional. And I'm going to put on some music so you can see the whole process. I also like to use a fine tip black marker and go over my cutout images to add some sketchy lines. I'm not going for the perfect uh, line here and uh, I feel like this gives the same look and feel on all my images, plus it helps them stand out against the background even more. And of course I just have to bring in my white gel pen, adding some white sketchy lines around all my cutout elements. And it's time to add my quote, for that I always like to combine different fonts, bigger and smaller. The quote that I'm going for today is, every year go someplace you've never been before. You can use your printer and print it out, I just went with my label maker. And for the word never, I'm going to use an alphabet stamp set. This is the Mega Brush Alpha, perfect for our journaling, and uh, I'm going to stamp those letters with black archival ink. As I was stamping them down, I realized that my ink pad is quite dry, I need to re-ink that, so I didn't get a good impression. Although these letters aren't supposed to be super solid, after all they are brush strokes. So in any case, you can stamp and just go over it with a black marker to fill in any imperfections if you have any. Also, I wanted to nest somehow my quote in that uh, bottom cluster, so that's why I am going up and down with the letters around the flower and I even stamped one of them on top of one of the buds. 
I also use the white gel pen to add some highlights on the letters, it helps them stand even more. And I will stick down the rest of the quote that I printed out with my label maker. If you follow me for a while, you already know that I love traveling and Japan is definitely one of my bucket list destinations, so this page really has a meaning for me. I did use my black fine tip marker to outline the quote and finally I'm going to add some white splashes and call this page done. So that was the layout for today, I hope that you had fun and that you got inspired. Don't forget down below in the description area you will find links on all the supplies that I used to create this page. Don't forget to like the video as well as leave me a comment, it really helps my channel and at the same time keeps me motivated to keep on sharing free art journal tutorials. Thank you all so much for joining me and I'll see you all next time.